Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. You hear me, you fucking fag? Glengarry Glen Ross is one of those movies that people have forgotten through time. It is a movie that was adapted from a play by David Mamet, who wrote the screenplay, adding extra scenes in order to flush out the characters. But more on that later. The movie collected an all-star team of established actors that wanted nothing more than just to play with the material. But is the movie any good? Let's find out. I'm Mephisto. Like, share, and subscribe because this is my review of the movie Glengarry Glen Ross. You know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here tonight. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. Glengarry Glen Ross is about 24 hours in the life of a small real estate office and its salesman. It starts off in the evening of a scheduled conference with the head salesman from the parent company, only to find out that it was actually a lecture from the head office guy threatening them to sell or get fired. You know what it takes to sell real estate? It takes brass balls to sell real estate. This puts Moss, Shelley, and the other salesmen in the office at a bind. They know how to sell, but they are stuck with terrible leads from their office manager, Williamson, and all this to win a competition that gives them a car, but more importantly, access to more lucrative leads that will surely bring them lots of money in the future. Only if they could just close those deals. These are the Glen Gary leads. And to you, they're gold, and you don't get them. Each salesman in the office goes about it in a different way of trying to get their deal done. However, Moss actually plans to rob the office and get his hands on those lucrative leads before they disappear and try and sell them off to a different office. Big surprise, they all come in the morning and the place has been robbed. And of course, Moss denies everything as the police work together with Williamson to try and find out who did the deed and where are all the leads. Because I am gonna close them all. And that's all I have to say to you. He's right, Williamson. First of all, I will have to explain what leads are. It's very simple. Leads are names of people and their phone numbers that have been collected through some sort of way and got into the hands of a real estate agency. These leads are considered good or bad depending on the manner and the place in which they were obtained. Just look at it this way. It is like targeted advertising. All the apps that you've got on your phone collect data from you and of course sell it off to an advertisement agency only to be turned around and hit you with targeted advertisement on your phone. I feel like I have to explain this because if you've never seen the movie before or don't understand anything about sales, you might get lost with the entire lingo and might not enjoy most of the start of the movie. Do you know what and the I premium leads cost? No, I know what the premium leads cost. Yeah. Yeah, I know what they cost. I generated the sufficient dollar revenue to buy them. David Mamet constructed a story which is a slice of life and took a lot of inspirations from his own life as an office manager of a firm much like the one depicted in the movie. It is a dissection of how these men and women operate and how they do it. The added element to this is this competition in the office with the first place winner getting a car. What David Mamet added to his stage play in this movie is the the key element of Blake, the head salesman from Mitch and Murray, the parent company, just to put an added pressure on these salesmen and push them throughout the story. It is the same kind of element that Les Grossman does in the movie Tropic Thunder. And much like Les Grossman's character, it created one of the best speeches in a movie ever, done masterfully by Alec Baldwin. When leads are weak, you're weak. I've been in this business 15 years. What's your name? you that's my name <laughs> in my intro i said this was an all-star cast and i meant it jack lemon alec baldwin al pacino alan arkin and harris jonathan price and a young actor by the name of kevin spacey all did a phenomenal job of bringing these salesmen to life they took the leads they took the cast took the contracts and a robbery when last night this morning I thought they took the leads the movie is also well known for its liberal use of profanity, which led some people to dub it as death of a fucking salesman. But moreover, it is a master class of acting, storytelling, and writing. It's got a quick paced dialogue and an interesting array of characters. Plus, it has a few twists and turns in it that leaves both you and the characters teetering between happiness and ultimate sadness. They put you on his board, I, some I, contest board. 
I... It's not right. It's not right to the customers. I know, it's... Why, well, hey... And it will show you the lengths people go to to make a sale or to chase that almighty dollar. The great thing about this movie is that it shows you a glimpse into the world of sales and salesmanship, something that you rarely get to see, but was depicted on the show Mad Men, a movie that the most expensive thing about it was the rain machine running constantly for the first third of the movie. Then I want the good leads on the Glen Gary leads too. Too, John, because I am going to close them both. It's a long road with no turning, Pally. Okay, now let's go. It is very easy for me to recommend this movie, which is a heavy story told in about 100 minutes of screen time that is solely relying on the performances of its actors and the supreme writing of David Mamet. An absolute joy that I hope you'll pick up and watch. Our life is looking forward or it's looking back. That's it. That's our life. I thank you for watching, and remember, hope is a good thing, maybe even the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. I'll see you on the next video.